Yo, yo, yo! Coming to you live from Philly. It's the best of the Paulie and Tony Fusco show! Yo, yo, yo! As always, Paulie Fusco here with Tony Fusco and Tony. Yo. Not a normal show today, is it? No, no. Very unusual. But don't worry. We're going to walk you through what's going on so you don't get confused at all. Exactly, people, because we know you're tuning in right now. You know, you want to hear our smart takes on all the big stories going on in sports right now. Well, you know, that's actually on you. That's your mistake, because you should know there are no big stories going on. You know, it's July, people. What do you want us to do? You know, be like ESPN and do like a college football preview show? Yeah, here's a preview of that. You're bored. Exactly. See, it's going to be much better for you and also for us. Yeah, because you see, this episode is what they call in the business a clip show. Okay, and now you're probably wondering, you know, what is a clip show? You can take out your pads and pencils because we're given another education over here. Yeah, that's what we do. So yeah, Yeah. what, what a clip show is, we'll let you behind the curtain. It's when we play you clips from previous episodes. Now, here's why clip shows are so good. Not only because they're jam-packed with entertainment, you know, because we've been number one in this business for 23 years and counting, as you all know. But the the other reason clip shows are so good is, see, what we do is we just have some nerd edited, cobbled together a a bunch of old clips. You you re-listen to them, and then Fox Sports Radio pays us the exact same amount they would had we done an actual show. And then, boom, easy money, bro. Yeah, well, except for our editor, because, you know, we told them to choose our best takes. And, well, how do you even choose, Tony? Look, you can't. You can't choose because they're all perfect. Yeah, well, uh, we also know how much you people out there like when we lay into our idiot producer back there. So uh, we told our editor to throw in a good, some of those good clips from that, too. Yeah, lots of zingers in there. We got them good. And since this is a clip show, that applies to the ads, too. So uh, right now, we're going to run a sponsored message from a company uh, that was so pleased with the message we did for them that they actually asked us to rerun it. So uh, here, run that again. Yeah, run it again. Let's go. Have you ever tried Australian food? Well, believe it or not, it's not as weird and off-putting as it sounds. In fact, Tony, you have your own story here. Uh, Tell the people. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I got my Aunt Marie and her boyfriend Nunzio a gift card to Outback Steakhouse. Well, I saw them the other night, and Nunzio seemed so happy. He told me he really enjoyed eating out down under with my aunt. I asked him what he ordered at Outback, and then he seemed confused. He said he'd never eaten there and didn't even know what Outback was. And I said, but you talked about eating out down under with my aunt. And... Oh... Uh, forget what I was saying. Let's just move on. Terrific story, Tony. Anyway, a special treat for our listeners. Visit Outback.com now. Enter the promo code FUSCO and get 0.02% off any gift card purchase of $700 or more. Offer only valid in Alaska. Okay, so uh, now that we got that uh, business out of the way, it's time to look at some of our greatest takes from this past year. So here we go with Top Takes. Top Takes. Such a sad turn of events as we saw at the Super Bowl, Tony. Unreal. A great game overshadowed by one bad call. And now we feel just terrible for the Eagles and also the Chiefs, don't we, Tony? Yeah. Now all anyone's going to remember from this game is that bad call. No one will remember who won or who lost or who won MVP. They will probably remember the rush TDs that Jalen Hurts had because that set a record. Yep. But other than that, everything else, just forgotten. So true, Tony. There are just certain times when you shouldn't make that call. You need to let the players on the field play the game. Isn't that right, Tony? Of course. We can't be reinforcing rules all the time. Imagine if the cops pulled over everyone who was speeding. The cops would be so busy giving tickets, all the murderers would go murder. So if you say all rules should be enforced at all times, then basically you're pro-murder. So elegantly put, Tony. And another thing we must point out is that the refs didn't call holding the entire game until that final call right there. So, you know, don't you think that the players must have been looking around thinking, hey, they're not calling holding. Holding must be legal in this game. Of course they did. You know, 
people always say there's an exception to every rule. Well, how is anybody going to know what the exception is and what's not? Yep. It's very confusing, and frankly, it's a mixed message to players. Top takes. We got to defend someone who is once again being unfairly attacked. Of course, yeah, we're we talking do. about Ja Morant, who, yep. again, for some reason, is in hot water just for flashing a gun on Instagram. But, I don't get you know, it. Tony, this is ridiculous. Explain to the people why. You know, John Morant lives in Memphis. The team is called the Grizzlies. If you live in an area prone to grizzly attacks, then it would be stupid not to carry a gun. Yep. You know, frankly, when I saw the video, I was shocked because I thought he should be carrying something bigger, like a rifle or a bazooka or something. You ever see the movie The Relevant with Leonardo DiCaprio? That one scene, it's terrifying. Terrific point there, Tony. And, you know, John Moran's critics out there, these idiots, you know, they're saying uh, that this is not how a role model should behave. Uh, Excuse me? Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you tell that to John Wayne? Yeah, a real man. Dirty Harry. Legend. Wyatt Earp. The best. Top take. You know, people, they're already up in arms about this uh, NFL schedule because it includes a a Friday night game. For the first time, they're going to be playing on Black Friday, November 24th. Yep, uh, Yep. saw that. People are saying that adding another night of football, as they always do, they say it adds to the injury risk, you know, puts more players in danger. You know, we listen on this show to complaints. We hear the people. But what we do that that separates us is we come up with solutions. And, And Tony... You said something the other day that was just so smart. It was just such a simple solution. Go, go yeah. tell the people. Here's my solution. If the players need more days to rest, then there's clearly a simple fix. Add more days to the week. Smart. If weeks had eight days instead of seven, there would be no problem. So yep. I propose that during NFL season, we add a day called Moose Day, which comes between Monday and Tuesday. Now, you're probably saying, won't this add more days to the year? No, because no. you just simply remove 17 days from August. Nobody likes August anyway. It's boring and hot and everyone's over it. So there, add Moose Day plus take away half of August. Problem solved. Just an absolutely brilliant solution by you, Tony. And Thank you. Don't be surprised, people, when September rolls around and you're all rushing out to buy new calendars. Yeah, and get used to saying TGIM. Yeah, Moose Day. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Just a terrible week for ESPN. Oh. Two shocking incidents occurring during their morning show, First Take. Unreal. And we're going to talk about one of them right now. Yep. It occurred on the segment uh, where Stephen A. Smith was asking longtime New York sports broadcaster Couldn't Michael Kay to name who he thought would be the next New York team to win a championship. Uh, let's go ahead and play that clip. Which team in New York do you think wins a championship next? Rangers. Oh, Lord. Come on, Patrick Kane they is don't able. Count. They don't count. Take they, don't out. count. they don't count. They don't count. The only thing I know about hockey, hockey is, is that the, the puck is black. black. Okay. And I love you, Gary Bettman. Huh? That's my buddy. For, for who I owe a trip to the hockey a. game. Right. It That's is it. No, it is no disrespect to the Rangers and to Patrick Kane, of course, but just, just for Steve. Football, a. basketball, baseball. Yeah. Wow. I still can't believe it. Just so disrespectful. So disrespectful. You know, you hear Stephen A. there totally shutting down the hockey conversation, trying to shift the conversation to football, baseball, basketball. Unbelievable. The NHL has always been considered one of the four major sports. You know, it's right up there with NFL, NBA, and MLB. Totally. Nothing competes with it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, well, unless you count NASCAR, but that's only in the South. Regional. Yeah, and uh, I, I, yeah, maybe UFC, but that's on pay-per-view. Elitist. Yeah, yeah and uh, maybe golf with Tiger Woods, but he's out of the picture now. Peg leg. And I guess you got to throw in college football and college basketball, too. Which are you not know. pro. Not yeah, pro. Yeah, not pro. And, well, maybe uh, you got to throw in Little League Baseball, because that does do big numbers for about a month each year. Yeah, that's and, true. And also poker. Also true. Horse racing. Yeah, that's fair. But it's animal sports, so, you know, asterisk. Yeah. Well, other than that, you know, it, hockey's a big four sport. It's undisputed. Totally. 
Can't argue. Can't yeah, argue. Well, on, the, on the subject of arguing, another great transition there by you, Tony. Terrific. Thank you. Yeah, that leads to another incident we saw on first take this week: a brouhaha oh. breaking out between J.J. Reddick and Kendrick Perkins. You know, Reddick fired back at Perkins because he thought Perkins was accusing the NBA MVP voters of being uh, kind of racist, I guess, because they gave MVP awards to Nikola Jokic, Dirk Nowitzki, and Steve Nash. And now they appear to be giving the award to Jokic once again. And, you know, Tony, it is an interesting point that uh, Kendrick Perkins is making here, but you felt he missed the point kind of, didn't you? Unfortunately, yes. You see... Kendrick Perkins was on the right track with his criticism of NBA MVP voting, but a closer look reveals that the real reason Nikola Jokic keeps getting named MVP is that in sports media, there's clearly a strong pro-Serbian bias. You think it's bad with the NBA MVP? Just look at the award for ATP Tennis Player of the Year. Every year, they got Novak Djokovic winning over and over again. Yep. As you can see, more evidence of clear Serbian bias. Terrific journalism and research there, Tony. Top takes. Truly, the biggest story in all of basketball. And no, it's not the Denver Nuggets making the NBA oh. Finals. Nobody yeah, cares Nobody about cares. That. Yeah, and it's definitely not LeBron possibly retiring. Oh, nobody please. Cares. Good riddance to him. Yeah, exactly. And it's definitely not Carmelo Anthony retiring. I thought he retired like five years ago. Yeah, same here. Anyway, the biggest story is clearly what's going on in the WNBA. Brittany Griner's WNBA return to the Phoenix Mercuries was the league's most watched game since 1999. It scored 683,000 viewers, you know, which is still virtually nothing. But, you know, in WNBA terms, that's That's like Super Bowl numbers. Exactly. Anyway, Tony... Don't be surprised, you know, if other leagues take notice of this, right? Absolutely. You know, if I'm NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman, I have to consider copying the Brittany Griner strategy to juice ratings. You take that Connor McDavid guy and you send him over to Russia and have him imprisoned in a Russian jail for only a year or so. Then we trade him back to America for a Russian war criminal and bada bing, bada boom, everyone's watching Oiler games again. Record ratings. Exactly. And, you know, you look at the NBA right now, you know, you got this yeah. possible Nuggets heat turd of a final that nobody wants to watch. Yeah. Adam Silver right now has got to be considering having North Korea maybe capture Jamal Murray, you know, just for a few days, you know, just before totally. the series starts. And maybe, you know, you think about it right at game time, you know, Jamal Murray just parachutes down into the arena like a fan, man. You know, the ratings would be huge. Ratings through the roof. In fact, the PGA Championship just got its lowest rating since 2008. Don't be surprised if before the U.S. Open, Brooks Koepka winds up being captured by a Venezuelan drug cartel or maybe a roving band of sea pirates. Terrific points, Tony. Bound to happen. Tom takes. Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp oh, yeah. finally, you know, get the divorce because they uh, seem to clearly hate each other. Yep. Anyway, uh, you know, people are saying that you know, this is all Skip's fault, that Shannon's oh, right please. to leave and all this... What? You know, this is what I totally hate about sports TV these days. You know, this idea that these former athletes can come on and be better at sports talk than journalists and seasoned radios. It's just ridiculous and frankly rude to our proud profession, isn't it right, Tony? You know, it's a toxic situation because these Hall of Fame athletes on TV now, they just naturally assume they know more about sports because they, you know, were in locker rooms and actually on the field. And that's a real problem. It's just terrible, you know, ruining the whole foundation yeah. of what our proud industry of sports talk radio is built on. You know, yep. we understand and Skip Bayless understands, too, that the only exactly. way to have true perspective on sports is to have no direct association with it at all. That's how you remain objective. right? Exactly. You got to be objective. Skip Bayless, he's looking for a replacement who won't argue with him so much, won't, you know, debate him as so Smart. much. And, Smart. Yeah, yeah, we totally agree with what Skip is doing here. You Absolutely. Know, who, who, why would anyone in their right mind want to have a co-host on their own show who disagrees with everything they say? Oh. Would you want that, Tony? No. 
I mean, that makes absolutely no sense, right? 100%. I mean, you can have compelling, interesting conversation, just like the one we're having right now, and agree on everything, right? You hit the nail smack on the head as usual. I got nothing further to add, because you nailed it. There you go. See, there people, you go. that's how it's done. Stop. Takes. We saw an absolutely terrific take oh, on gem ESPN of take. this week from just a brilliant observer of sports. Of course, I'm talking about Chris Mad Dog yep. Russo, who said boldly and correctly, mind you, that this year's Nuggets team was totally overrated and that the 1986 so right. Celtics would sweep the Nuggets 4-0, no contest. And Tony, Mad Dog Russo is so right here, isn't he? Absolutely. This year's Nuggets team would stand no chance against the 86 Celtics. All you got to do is look at the number of Hall of Famers on each team. That's yep. the ultimate way to judge a team. The yep. 86 Celtics had six Hall of Famers. The Nuggets have none. That's a glaring difference. Such a great point there, Tony. And, you know, Thank another you. angle here that, you know, I can't, I can't believe the media, or maybe I can believe that the media is just too chicken to talk yep. about. You'll exactly. only hear it on this show, people. Doesn't anybody find it a little strange that hmm. in the span of a week, we've seen two athletes win major championships from a country that nobody's heard of? You got uh, Novak Djokovic, the Serbian, yep. winning the, the French Open. Yep. Then you got uh, Nikola Jokic, also Serbian, mm -hmm. winning the NBA Finals. And nobody in our business seems to bat an eye fi and find this weird. It's, it's very disconcerting, isn't it, Tony? Very. You know, I don't get my information from the internet because I'm not dumb and gullible. I go to trusted sources like encyclopedias. Smart. I went to my most trusted world book encyclopedia that I've had for 30 years. And what's so strange is that there's no mention of a country called Serbia. But now everyone's talking about Serbia this and Serbia that. Isn't it just a little strange how this quote unquote country is so important all of a sudden? Just terrific perspective and research that Tony. And you Thank know, you. what I'm about to say is controversial, but you know, it's our duty as journalists. It must yep. be said. What about Chernobyl? You know, you had all that nuclear radiation spraying all over the place wow, like 40 so years true. ago or so. You look now at what's going on. All of a sudden, you got these monster athletes sprouting up everywhere in this country over there. You know, we've seen this before. Just look at the Incredible Hulk. The radiation transformed Bruce Banner and made him huge. You absolutely 100% have to consider that maybe all those gamma rays from Chernobyl got into their DNA and gave them super strength. You absolutely have to. Yeah. And, you know, this is what they call in the business, people, investigative journalism. We do real news on this show, That's unlike some do. other outlets. Top takes. Wow, Tony. Wow, incredible. I got geese bumps just listening to those. And, you know, that was just 1% of all the great exactly. takes. That didn't yep. even... That was just, you know, not even the tip of the iceberg, but like not whatever even. is above the tip. Yeah. Anyway, uh, by now, public demand, you know, people out there, you also like that part where, you know, our producer Jay interrupts with his stupid corrections and, you know, we yeah. tell him what then he we what destroy an idiot his is. Ass. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and play uh, some of those clips right now. He said John Morant needs a gun to protect himself from grizzly bears running around Memphis. Yeah, bro. Yeah, the team's called the Grizzlies, bro. They're called the Grizzlies because they originally played in Vancouver. There are no grizzly bears in Memphis. Oh, yeah? Well, you know what's going to be grizzly? When I murder you. Yeah, next time we talk bears, it's going to be where to bury your body. Boom, oh, that's it. We're one, done. Let's you keep saying the Nuggets player is Nikola Jokic? Yeah, yeah, that's his name. Yeah. No, it's Nikola Jokic, not Jokic. Maybe you should try watching a Denver Nuggets game. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to joke kick you in the Nuggets if you catch my drift. Yeah. You know what? I can't wait to watch your funeral. Oh, yeah. good one, Tony. James Bradbury did admit that he held Juju Smith-Schuster. So? So what? So if a player admits that he committed a penalty, there should be no discussion after that. It's over. 
you're right. The only thing we should discuss is where to bury your body. Yeah, there's only one penalty we should discuss with you. The death penalty. Oh, great one, Tony. Got him. You basically slammed ESPN for not talking hockey on their debate shows. Yeah, it's shameful of them. Totally. You guys never talk hockey on this show. In fact, I don't think I've heard you talk hockey ever. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't think I've ever heard you. Shut the f*** up. Yeah, hockey reminds me of your love life. Cold as ice. Yeah. Great one, Tony. You said Serbian athletes are so dominant because of the nuclear effects of Chernobyl. Yeah, bro, crazy. Upsetting, but true. Yeah. If that even was true, nuclear radiation doesn't make you stronger. You only see that happen in comic books, not in real life. Oh, yeah, well, you know what else you only see in comic books? Nerds like you. Yeah, and you know what's also not in real life? Your girlfriend. Yeah, he's done. That's it. Let's get out of here. We're done. By the way. What? You do realize why there was no such country called Serbia 30 years ago. It's mysterious, bro. Very mysterious. Serbia was part of Yugoslavia. Then it declared independence in 2006. But I I shouldn't be surprised that you don't know that, though. Oh, yeah, well, speaking of surprises, wait until you start your car tonight. Yeah, forget Yugoslavia. It's going to be Yugo Kabumi. Yeah, you're done. Great one. He's done. done. You know, Tony, we really need to get a new producer on this show. It's just become. Yeah, I mean, what are we doing? This is supposed to be a best of show, not a worst of. Why are we even putting producer Jay in the show? Great point, Tony. We should have just played our parts, you know, and just left him out. Yep, exactly. But anyway, it didn't ruin what was otherwise a terrific clip show because you know what made it so great we didn't have to do a single thing we didn't have to lift a finger here no easy uh, money for us easy Easy all day so anyway in the meantime you you know you want to lift a finger go subscribe on uh, youtube uh you know follow us on tiktok all our social media platforms listen to our back episodes and uh tony we didn't do much but we did it great especially you Absolutely. Same to you, Paulie. Another flawless clip show. There you go. We'll see you people in uh, some time. See ya.